SpaceX's flagship spacecraft, the Starship, is rapidly taking shape in Boca Chica, SpaceX's production facility in Texas in the US. As more features and tasks are completed, SpaceX gets closer to the first orbital flight of the Starship, which will see the Ship 20 or S-20 prototype fly to orbit before returning to Earth. Join us as we examine Starship S-20's final updates. SpaceX is busy building a spacecraft that is fully reusable in both stages. For the upper stage to be reusable, it needs to land after re-entering the Earth. That re-entry is a complex task, and if steps are not taken, it will damage the Starship and prevent its reuse. This will be a big blow to Musk's plan to make space travel cheaper and faster by reflying the Starship many times. He believes there is no reason SpaceX cannot reuse its spacecraft like airlines reuse their aircraft. One of the many risks associated with the Starship re-entering the Earth is the damage by heat. This is because the returning Starship will come into contact with lots of heat in the Earth's atmosphere. SpaceX will protect the Starship by fixing heat-resistant tiles on the side of the Starship that will come into contact with the heat. The tiles number about 15,000 and are black, hexagonal, and fixed by hand. Twice, the tiles came off, the first time while SpaceX's crew fixed the tiles and transported the prototype to the launch pad, and the second time during a validating test. SpaceX, however, has been fixing, replacing, or repositioned the affected tiles. The tiles are not the only point of failure when the prototype tries to return to the Earth. Almost all the systems on board must work as intended for a triumphant return. That said, the S-20 prototype, which SpaceX will stack on the Super Heavy Booster 4 prototype for the first flight to orbit, has completed a cryogenic test, which shows how the steel structure will behave when loaded with ultra-cooled fuel. The CEO announced it was successful, meaning his company could focus on other aspects of the spacecraft's development. One of such other aspects of the S-20 prototype is the flaps. You can't miss them from the videos and pictures of the Starship circulating on the internet. The wing-like components come in when the Starship performs a free-fall, engine reignition, flip, and landing maneuvers that must take place before it can land. As a result, they are a crucial piece of the puzzle. If you watch closely, you'll notice the flaps on the S-20 are smaller than on the SN-15. Musk explained test flight data indicated they didn't have to be as large. Since they need to be protected too from heat, SpaceX has covered half of their surface with the same black tiles. If you expect any complex movements from the flaps, you would be wrong. They can only make simple flapping motions by design because they are not intended for producing lift. All they do is help the Starship during its descent to control its pitch, altitude, and roll as it free falls belly down to the ground. Picture them like the arms and legs of a skydiver wearing a wingsuit. SpaceX is not the first to explore this concept as you would find structural wings on the iconic Space Shuttle. However, SpaceX's implementation adds significantly less mass to the spacecraft. The four flaps create as much drag as possible during descent and slow the Starship down to a terminal velocity of around 100 meters per second, or 225 miles per hour. This freefall method of landing allows the Starship to land vertically and eliminates the need for extended and costly runways for the Starship to coast to a stop. This is another advantage of the Starship's design over the Space Shuttle. It saves SpaceX lots of money and logistical challenges, as the plan is for multiple liftoffs and landings per day. What will power the flaps during the descent? In designing the powering system for the flaps, SpaceX turned to its sister company, Tesla. The actuators move with the help of the same electric motors in the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. The motors get power from two Model S batteries. One problem SpaceX has to solve is how the movement mechanisms of the flaps are protected from the heat. Since the flaps have to perform movement across their full range of motion during re-entry, not just landing, the gaps between the tiles are vulnerable to the flood of superheated plasma due to the Starship's supersonic speed. The flaps worked during the testing of the SN-15 prototype, but since it was a suborbital flight, they were not tested for performance in the face of immense heat. The Space Shuttle also had to deal with the same problem of protecting the actuating mechanism of its wing by coming up with special seals that block out superheated plasma. SpaceX is in a better place to deal with the heat, given it uses steel instead of aluminium, but ultimately still has to protect all the sensitive components that make the flaps move. It is not clear yet how SpaceX wants to solve this heat problem. 
However, it seems SpaceX is relying on the very tight tolerances of the crater-like aero surface they fit into, coupled with a felt-like ceramic wool blanket. A reassuring fact is, if the gaps are tiny enough, the hypersonic airstream will not penetrate, so SpaceX might get away with a mechanism it already has. The next step for the S-20 prototype is the reinstallation of its Raptor engines. This will be the third time SpaceX is going through this process. It would be in preparation for a static fire test, a crucial part of preparing for the orbital test flight. We don't know how many of the static tests SpaceX will carry out, but it will likely start with between one and three Raptor engines before going ahead to the full complement of Raptor engines. During this upcoming static fire test, SpaceX will be testing the vacuum version of the Raptor engine on a prototype for the first time, marking another milestone. We will also see the two variants, that is, the sea level and vacuum, in action on the same prototype. Musk's ambition is to start a colony of people on Mars, and the crucial link is the Starship. It will take people in batches of 100 through the vast space between the Earth and Mars. The SpaceX boss has calculated he needs about 1 million volunteers on the planet before the new community is self-sustaining. That is a lot of people to transport in a short period. This is why he wants the Starship to be quickly reusable to launch several missions in a day. But before moving people to Mars, Musk has to put in place all the life-sustaining systems. This too is a serious undertaking, as it would involve moving tons of cargo to the planet. The Starship is quite capable as the most powerful spacecraft ever built. It can handle both human riders and cargo. But before Musk starts sending people to Mars with the Starship, NASA will use the spacecraft to land its astronauts on the Moon. If NASA's plan goes through, this will happen in 2024. NASA's mission to the Moon in 2024 will be significant because it will signify the return of the human race to the satellite. Not only that, but it would land a woman on the Moon for the first time. But that won't be the end of NASA's use for the Starship, as it is the vehicle that will take its astronauts to Mars one day, although they won't be staying permanently like Musk's passengers. Now, as Musk continues to share SpaceX's plan and engineering decisions on Twitter, entrepreneurs in China are also taking notes. This does not bother Musk anyway, as he expects that to happen, which is why SpaceX does not attempt to patent its technologies. However, it is flattering to note that CAS Space, a commercial spin-off of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is also planning to catch their rockets with a pair of arms, just like SpaceX's Megazilla. You could say that didn't take long. CAS Space is gearing up to offer commercial space exploration like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic are doing. The Chinese firm wants to use a reusable single-stage rocket to take as many as seven people at a time on a 10-minute ride to the Kármán line. The vehicle itself looks like a mashup of Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket and SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. CAS Space has an ambitious target of 2024 to start operation, and it would be interesting to see just how many more of SpaceX's concepts it needs to make it happen. Let us know what you think of SpaceX's S20 chances of completing the orbital test successfully in the comments.